Okay, you wanna make sourdough bread. Obviously, you need starter, so we'll start with the basics. I'm gonna show you how to make starter, how to use your old starter that's in your fridge to make sourdough bread, how to proof your bread, score, and obviously how to bake it. But before we even get into that, let's talk about some tools that you're going to need to make sourdough bread. You're going to obviously need some type of flour. You can use just about any flour. For the purpose and intention of the recipes that I'm going to be showing you in this video, I'm using all-purpose white flour. You're going to need good quality water source. I use artesian spring water and a measuring cup to measure your water. You're going to need a scale there are variables, but for the most part, a scale will give you relative consistent bread making every single time. You're going to need a good quality salt. When you make sourdough starter for the very first time, you can use a metal spoon or a metal fork to mix it. But after that, plastic and metal will leach into the ferment. So you'll want to use something like a silicone or a wooden utensil for mixing. When you make the initial sourdough starter, you're going to need some sort of container, whether it's a small mason jar or an anchor container, something. Then after you've made your sourdough starter, you're going to need a bowl to make your sourdough bread. I have a bunch of these different Pyrex containers. This is a smaller one with a matching lid because you do need to cover your dough as it's rising. I have two of these larger Pyrex glass bowls. I don't have a glass lid for it. As you can see, this one's too small. So for that reason, you can either cover this with a, a dampened lint-free clean tea towel, or this is just a vegetable bag that you get from the grocery store. Don't throw them out. It fits perfectly inside. Glass is best. I personally don't like ceramic because unless it's a brand new version of ceramic, older ceramics leach lead, which I'm weary on that. If you want to use a ceramic crock pot, by all means, just don't ever use plastic. If you don't have glass, you can use a wooden bowl. Once your bread is made and you're ready to proof it, you're going to need a proofing basket of some size and shape. I have a, a variety of oblong different sizes and different size round ones. It all depends on how many people you're making for and the kind of bread that you're making. I'll use a small one if I'm going to make bread, a specialty bread just for myself. But if I'm making bread for both Dom and I, I find a larger one works best. These Banneton baskets, this is the Banneton basket and this is the lint free liner. You can use this basket without the liner. You just have to make sure you get flour all through the crevices. Personally, I find it a lot easier to use this because I can just take it out, rinse it off. I very seldom wash it with soap and water. I find if you just rinse it really well with clean water, and let it dry, you can reuse it again and again and again. Even when you use a liner, you still have to dust it or otherwise your dough will stick to this fabric. Personally, I like to use rice flour, be it white or brown. That said, if you don't have rice flour, you can just use your basic all-purpose white flour to dust. It'll work just as well. Now that said, I've found you use a whole lot less rice flour than you do all-purpose white flour when it comes to dusting. You may or may not need a dough scraper. Hypothetically, let's say this is our dough. When you're lifting the dough to put in your basket, Sometimes it helps to use a dough scraper to lift it up and flip it over so that you can put it into your basket. Another thing you want is a spray bottle. I have artesian spring water in this, and this is to spray the dough before you bake it. When it comes to actually baking your sourdough bread, I find cast iron Dutch ovens to be the best. Now that said, there's other ways that you can bake sourdough bread and in future videos I will show you alternative ideas if you don't have cast iron dutch oven. This one is enamel coated. I have to be honest, I don't like this for making sourdough bread. The reason being is because the inside tends to burn in high heat such as what you need for sourdough baking. So for that reason I don't like this one when it comes to baking bread. Instead, I prefer a regular cast iron Dutch oven. You're going to need parchment paper, whether it's 
Costco, Kirkland, or Titan, or whatever brand you want to use. You want to cut off a reasonable size that will fit into your pot. Now here's the thing, everything's getting expensive, right? Well, I'm pretty frugal anyway. I've lived like this even before the economy changed. I will use parchment paper over and over and over again until essentially it crumbles in my hand and I can't use it anymore. So I've used this about three or four times. Don't feel like just because you've baked a loaf of bread once, you have to get rid of it. You can use it again and again and again. If you don't have parchment paper or you just can't afford it, you can simply sprinkle the bottom of your cast iron after it's been heated, just before you put your loaf of bread in. You can sprinkle cornmeal or flour on the bottom, and then put your dough on, cover it, and bake it. So there's alternative ways. I'm not going to show you that in this particular video, but in a future video, I will. After your bread is baked, Obviously, you need something to cool your bread on. If you don't have a cookie rack or a baking rack, you can just use a chopping block. And finally, after your bread is baked and cooled, you need to store it for longevity. I save all my old milk bags and the ties, but I don't put my bread directly into the plastic because what I found is the bread is so crunchy, it makes little holes in the and then as your bread's sitting on the counter in the plastic bag, there's nothing to seal it so it doesn't stay fresh. The trick is a bread bag. This is a bread bag that I made myself. And you can make this bread bag from a sheet or pillowcase or a tea towel, anything that's lint free and cotton, obviously that's cleaned. I made different sizes. So I have ones for smaller loaves or half loaves. And then I've made larger ones for really big loaves. So you can get creative and make your own bag. One of the things that you're gonna notice about your bread in this bread bag, inside a plastic bag, is that this feels a little bit moist. That's okay, that's actually what you want. Because what's happening is when you have just plastic because the crust is making little tears, minuscule tears every time you put it in and take it out of the bag, the moisture escapes the bag. But this holds the moisture into the cloth and then because you're putting it into the bag and removing the air, all the moisture stays in there and that makes your bread fresher for a lot longer. I can keep a loaf of bread on my counter for almost two weeks. No mold, fresh, just like it came out of the oven, soft and moist and springy. So if you buy milk, hold on to your milk bags and hold on to those tabs. If you don't have these, you can use just a tie like this. The idea is to make sure that you use the cloth bread bag, take out the air, secure it, and then I like to keep my bread in a basket on the counter. And sourdough bread in a cloth bag inside the milk bag freezes exceptionally well. Three steps, three days, and then you'll have sourdough starter. Put your empty vessel on the scale. Turn your scale on. It should read zero. And now all you want to do is add approximately 15 grams of flour and 15 grams of water. It should total 30. Turn your scale off. Put it away. This is not fermented. So now is about the only time that you'll ever use a metal utensils to stir it is mix it up into a paste. If you don't have a container like this, you can always just use a glass mason jar. Put the lid on it and then turn the oven light on in your stove and just set it in your stove with the light on. The oven's not actually on, just the light and leave it there for 24 hours. It's been 24 hours since I made this and you can see that it's already bubbly, which is exactly what you want. So now we need to feed it. I put it on the scale and then I turn the scale on. I'm going to add another 25 grams of flour. 
and 25 grams of water. Turn the scale off. And now, because it's already been fermenting, you don't want to put metal in this or plastic, so you can either just silicone or wood and mix that all up. Because I know this is going to double in size, I'm going to transfer this into a two cup mason jar because I still have one more feeding. And now we'll put this back in the oven with the light on. And now we'll leave this for another 24 hours. It's day three, and already you can see just how bubbly that really is. Grab your scale, put your vessel on top, turn your scale on. So far we have 40 grams of sourdough, and I want to make approximately 100 grams in total. So that means we need 60 grams more. Don't be alarmed if your scale wavers back and forth by about a gram. It's not a big deal. Eventually it will level off. So now I want to add 60 grams of water. And that will bring the total to 120 grams. Turn your scale off. Remove it. And again, because this is fermented, you only want to use silicone or wood. And now we're going to mix it very well. And now we'll put this in the oven with the light on. for 24 hours. If you're going to use your sourdough starter when it's this young, you have to realize it's probably not strong enough for bread making. In order for this sourdough starter to be strong enough to make bread, you'd need to feed it now, leave it on your counter for one to two hours, put it in your fridge for about three to four weeks, bring it out of the fridge, feed it again, and leave it out for another one to two hours, put it back in the fridge again, and do that for at least three to five months, and then it'll be strong enough to make bread. So if you choose to wait four or five months before you make bread, then you will want to follow the next part of this video where you take the cold sourdough starter out of your fridge the night before you're ready to make bread. After four or five months of feeding your sourdough starter, you're going to end up with a fairly large amount of sourdough starter. Please don't throw this out. You're going to see videos where they tell you to discard. You don't have to do that. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because the longer this sits in your fridge, the more potent it becomes. Also, if you make sourdough bread regularly, you're going to need a fair bit of starter. So here's the thing with this sourdough starter. After around four or five months, you don't have to feed it monthly. You can leave it in your fridge for three or four months and then feed it. And the reason being is because you're going to be taking from this each time that you're going to make your next loaf of sourdough bread. So for that reason, you can decide based on how often you bake bread and how much bread you make, whether you want to continue feeding it monthly or wait three or four months before you feed it. That's completely up to you and what works for your lifestyle. That said, I know some of you are still gonna go ahead and try because if you're anything like me, sometimes you just need to learn from experience, right? So if that's the case, if you are going to make bread from this fresh sourdough starter, take about a tablespoon and add it to another jar. Grab your scale, put your jar on it, turn your scale on, and add 25 grams of flour and 25 grams of water. And then mix that up. Put the lid on it. Turn the light on your stove and leave it 12 hours. After 12 hours when this is ready, you'll want to skip to the how to make sourdough bread and you'll use this starter. I do this phase at night so that I can start making my bread first thing in the morning. I don't know, are you a night person? Do you want to wake up and stretch and fold your bread all night long? That's up to you. If you don't have time for the day and you don't have time at night, then maybe sourdough bread baking is something that you'll do only on the weekends. As for the remainder of your fresh, warm sourdough starter, simply feed it, put it in the fridge, and the next time you're ready to use it, follow the next part of this video. This has been sitting in my fridge for about a month. 
it's 7.40 at night. I need to leave this out for a couple hours to get warm. Using a little bit of this, I'll make another batch of sourdough starter for bread that I will make tomorrow. Okay, it's been two and a half hours. It's still pretty cold, but that's okay. Let's take out a bit that much. I'm going to turn on my scale and I'm going to add about 50 grams of water. For a total of 100. Using a wood or silicon utensil, mix well. I'm going to put this in the oven with the light on overnight. Do you want to snack before bed? And of course, before I go to bed, I want to feed this because I haven't fed it for a while. So for this, I'm just going to add 25 grams of flour and 25 grams of water. I'll leave this out on the counter all night and then by tomorrow, early in the morning, I could put it back in the fridge and then it'll be ready in a few more days when I'm ready to bake another loaf of bread. It's been 24 hours, and as you can see, the sourdough starter is ready. To make this recipe, add your sourdough starter, three cups of all-purpose white flour, and a cup of water. With clean hands, mix the dough, add a little water as needed. In this initial phase of the dough, what should you be looking for? Your dough should be tacky. In other words, it should stick slightly to your skin. If it's dry, add a little more water. And if it's really wet, you might want to add just a little bit of flour. Cover and let your dough rest for 20 minutes and then add a teaspoon of salt. Now, once you've added the salt, you'll begin to notice that the structure of the dough begins to change. And so it becomes more pillowy. See how it bounces back? So be prepared to experience a shift in the structure and the feel of your dough. Cover your dough and set it into your oven with the light on for approximately one hour. An hour later, remove it. And now we will stretch and fold the dough with a moist hand. Stretch and fold the dough four to six times, gently rotating the bowl as you go. Cover, place in the oven again, and repeat this entire process once every hour for the next eight to 10 hours. The more you stretch and fold your dough, the more air pockets begin to form. The springier your dough becomes, the more pillowy, soft to the touch. It also becomes bigger and more voluminous, meaning your dough will look very small in the beginning and will take up more space in the bowl towards the end of the day. Clean your surface really well and then transfer the dough onto the clean counter. Gently flatten the dough, and now we're going to stretch and fold two times lengthwise and two times in the opposite direction. Flip your dough over, pull it towards you with your fingers and push away with your thumbs. This will tighten the dough into a nice uniform ball. After you have shaped your dough, it should not spread out. It should stand up firm without moving. Let's take some rice flour and dust your banneton basket really well. Lightly dust the surface of your dough and then using your dough scraper, lift the dough and place it upside down 
in your banneton basket. Dust a little more flour over top of the dough. Clean your surface and wrap either in a plastic bag or a damp tea towel. And place the dough in your fridge overnight. 24 hours later, remove the lid from your cast iron Dutch oven and turn your oven on to 450 degrees. While the oven and Dutch oven are preheating, we will now remove the dough from the fridge, turn the bread over onto the parchment paper, lift the banditon basket away, and using a razor blade or a scoring knife, making cuts at a 45 degree angle, we will cut a design, this is called scoring, into the dough. Next, we'll take a spray bottle and spray the dough with water. Moisture helps the bread to rise and gives a nice blistering effect. After approximately half an hour, we will remove the Dutch oven from the oven, place the dough into the Dutch oven, add the lid, and put the Dutch oven into the oven for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes has passed, you want to remove the lid and leave the dough to bake for another 25 to 30 minutes. Unfortunately, I forgot to set the timer and I went a few minutes over, but that's okay. Turn your oven off, remove your bread, and don't get rid of that parchment paper. You can use it again. Place it inside your Dutch oven, secure the lid and put it aside. Remember I said it was okay that it went a few minutes over? It didn't burn. It's nice and blistered, crispy, perfect. And now I'll leave it on the counter for a couple hours to cool. In the meantime, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna cut this loaf that I made from the other day. This is a combination of all-purpose white flour, rye and barley flour, and whole wheat flour. Observe the uniform porousness of the bread. One of my favorite sourdough bread foods is fermented liver pate. This is grass-fed beef liver that I cooked and canned and then I fermented it and then I added a little bit of mayonnaise and hot pepper. <laughs> so good. I hope you have as much fun making your sourdough starter and your sourdough bread as I did making this video. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And until I see you in the next video, ciao for now.